So today I'm going to discuss about facial paralysis. This is an important topic for understanding stroke, Bell's palsy or any other pathology. Now, what is facial paralysis? Facial paralysis means loss of facial movement due to the damage to the nerve supplying the facial muscles. So if there is any lesion in the facial nerve, this causes paralysis of the facial muscles. Now, what are the causes of facial paralysis? So the causes of facial paralysis include number one stroke, then Bell's palsy. It may be due to idiopathic tumors, infections like herpes zoster virus infection, acute separative otitis media and chronic separative otitis media and also trauma. So these are the cause of facial paralysis. Now what are the clinical features of facial paralysis? So there are two types of facial paralysis. One is upper motor neural lesion of facial nerve and another one is lower motor neural lesion of facial nerve. Now what are the clinical features of these two types? I am showing it on the board. So the clinical feature of lower motor neuron type of facial nerve paralysis is there is loss of wrinkling on the affected side, there is loss of nasolabial fold on the affected side and there is drooping of the corner of the mouth on the affected side but mouth divides to normal side. Now before going to the deep of the discussion I should tell why their mouth divides to normal side. Mouth divides to normal side as because the muscles like levator labi superioris, zygomaticus major, zygomaticus minor and vaccinator, these muscles are paralyzed in this side. As these muscles are paralyzed in this side, so what happens is the muscles of another side get upper hand and they pull the corner of the mouth. That's why there is mouth divides to normal side and drooping of the corner of the mouth on the affected side. And in upper motor neuron type of facial nerve paralysis, there is wrinkling present in both sides and loss of nasolabial fold in the affected side and drooping of the corner of the mouth. Mouth divides to normal side. So if I compare with the both type of facial nerve paralysis, I will see that in lower motor neuron type of facial nerve paralysis, there is one side of the whole face is affected and another side is intact. So in case of lower motor type of facial nerve paralysis, loss of wrinkling, loss of nasolabial fold, drooping of the corner of the mouth. What does it mean? It means this one side of the whole face is affected and another side is healthy. And in case of upper motor neuron lesion of facial nerve paralysis, wrinkling present on both sides. But this nasolabial fold and drooping of the corner of the mouth on the affected side. That means this upper part of the whole face this upper part of the whole face is intact and lower part of the face is affected. So this is the gross difference in between the lower motor neuron type of facial nerve paralysis and upper motor neuron type of facial nerve paralysis. In lower motor neuron type of facial paralysis, one side of the whole face will be affected and another side will be intact. And in case of upper motor neuron type of facial nerve paralysis, the whole upper part will be intact and lower part will be affected. So, um, this discussion may seem a bit confusing but it will be very much clear when I'll go for explanation or mechanism of this facial paralysis.
now this is the cortex and this is spons we know that the facial nerve nucleus lies in the pons and this facial nerve nucleus has two regions one is ventral region another one is dorsal region ventral dorsal the same way ventral dorsal ventral dorsal so facial nerve nucleus has two region ventral region dorsal region this dorsal region supplies the upper part of the face and this ventral region supplies the lower part of the face now interestingly this dorsal region gets input from both side of the cortex you can see this dorsal region of this facial nerve nucleus getting input from this side of the cortex also and also this side of the cortex but this ventral region of this nucleus gets input only from the contralateral side now if there is lower motor neuron type of facial nerve paralysis that means if there is infranuclear lesion if lesion is below the nucleus this is nucleus lesion is below the nucleus if there is infranuclear lesion what happens is these fibers will get damaged if these fibers will get damaged what will be the consequences i am showing suppose this fiber is damaged then if this fiber is damaged the muscles of these fibers are damaged and if these fibers are damaged so these fibers are also damaged that means this muscles of this side are paralyzed so what happens is in this side all the muscles are paralyzed this is the reason why all the branches of facial nerve in this side in one side will be paralyzed in lower motor type of facial nerve paralysis so if there is infranuclear lesion all the branches of facial nerve like jamporal branch zygomatic branch buccal mandibular and cervical branch of this facial nerve will be damaged and there will be paralysis of one side of the whole face so there will be paralysis of one side of the whole face this is paralyzed but this part will be intact now in case of upper motor type of facial nerve paralysis what happens is the lesion is above the nucleus that's why it is called supranuclear lesion or upper motor neuron lesion if there is supranuclear lesion or upper motor neuron lesion then all the fibers of this side will get damaged if all the fibers will get damaged what will be the consequence like this fiber is damaged so if this fiber is damaged this fiber should be damaged and if this fiber is damaged the muscles of this side will get paralyzed the muscles of this part of the face will be paralyzed then this fiber is damaged if this fiber is damaged this fiber should be damaged but this fiber is not actually damaged as because this fiber is getting input from this side also because i told before that the dorsal region of this nucleus gets input from both side of the cortex that's why if this fiber is damaged this fiber is not damaged as because this is getting input from this side also that's why this is intact so this group of muscles will be intact again if this fiber is damaged this fiber should be damaged but this fiber is also not damaged as because this fiber is also getting input from this side of the curve like before so this fiber is also not damaged that's why this part group of the muscles are intact so we can see that in case of lower motor type of facial nerve paralysis the one part of the whole face is affected and another part another side is intact but in case of upper motor neuron type of facial nerve paralysis the whole upper part is intact but lower part of the face is affected so this is the mechanism of facial nerve paralysis hope you like this video and thank you for watching the videos Thank you.